We got intel reports of Hassan and the cartel forming terrorist cells all over the globe. We've never seen activity on this scale before. They have an army. But we have each other. The world is a vampire. to the open beta. And there we go, Call of Duty fans. The trailer so nice. We ran it twice. It is all there. Everything that makes this franchise so, so special. We are incredibly excited to be here today. And after that, quite frankly, how can you not be? My name is Miles Ross, and I am so excited to truly be here with a few of the members of the Infinity Ward team who are bringing Modern Warfare 2 to life. Guys, we have 200 of our friends behind us who are going to be playing and streaming shortly. But before that, we also have Stephanie Snowden, Director of Communications for Infinity Ward, as well as Joe Seeker over the there, Jeff Smith, multiplayer design directors here at Infinity Ward. Guys, first off, oh, how are things <laughs> evolving uh, from Modern Warfare 2019? I mean, let's start high level because there's a lot to get through today, guys. You saw that trailer. Let's go with the philosophy, Steph. Let's, let's stay high level. What went into the creation of the game? You said it precisely. There is so much. This game has just so much content. It's got something for everyone. And it's really been the result of three years of hard work um, at IW and our partners across all of the Activision studios. And so much of that work started with you guys at home. The community, the fans, our creators here, and that conversation and feedback from 2019 is really been a core piece of what Modern Warfare 2 is. And it's a dialogue that we hope to, uh, you know, continue, especially here today. Well, we've got so much in store with this MP experience. And um, people like Jeff and Joe here, who I am honored to work with and their experience on this franchise, we're in good hands. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Okay, so Jeff, um, well, I don't know where to start anymore. Uh, let's, uh, let's set up what Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer is, is all about. Uh, and let's stay high level for now, because there's a lot of details, friends, juicy details. Sure, I mean, you know, when you come into making a sequel, it can be kind of tricky, you know? Um, what do you keep from the previous game? Uh, what do you get rid of? And where can you add new things in and not mess up this kind of nicely balanced ecosystem that we had? Uh, and so we came up with a few uh, methods, one of them being uh, player behaviors. And I say behaviors um, and not uh, play styles. I think a lot of people will say play styles, but that can kind of change during a match, but behaviors are more ingrained in how players play. 
Um, and we just put them into three big groups. Uh, we call them rushers, which are just aggressive players. They just want to find the action and go. And then we have sentinels. Um, and these are defensive players. They want to just kind of hold down a building, maybe keep a little overwatch. Um, and then we have um, stalkers, which are reactive. And they kind of hang back and try to read the field and read where um, spawns are. And really, we just kind of use these as filters to keep us honest with the content that we're making. Um, so they're making enough toys and equipment for players to be successful playing our game. Sounds like a lot of fun. Stephanie, uh, what are some of the new features coming to multiplayer, um, some of the new stuff that you're most excited to talk about? Oh, boy. There are a ton of new features to dive into with this game. But um, we really pushed forward even the most fundamental aspects of, of what makes a Call of Duty game um, with Modern Warfare 2. And it's been really amazing for me to come on board uh, this past year and see these innovations coming to life, to hear Jeff jump into you know, breaking down the 1v1. Um, and personally for me, uh, water. Our water, I've seen the memes, we love water. It's really hard to make in games. Um, but the aquatic combat, some of the things you're able to do with vehicles in the water, I think that level of immersion is really going to speak to fans and has been something that I've really enjoyed playing the last, uh, last couple months. Aquatic combat. Steph loves to swim. Um, Joe, sure can, we, can we go into some details about our water-based adventures in MW2? Yeah, I mean, last game we really wanted to add water, and we knew we didn't have time, right? So in Verdance, we froze the rivers and we made the outskirts just to kill trigger. In this game, as soon as we started Modern Warfare 2, we leaned into water, both visually, um, beautiful caustics, um, there's waves with white caps, um, but we also, the gameplay side, there's unique ballistics underwater. Um, you only can use certain weapons underwater. Your pistol is your weapon underwater, otherwise you can't use your primary weapons. Um, but it's also a nice cover or evasion mechanic. If you're getting shot at, you can dive into the water, and as you get deeper, it gets murkier. Like, the farther you are from something, you can't see it. And so, it's been super fun for us to, to dig into water and really flex on what water could be in Call of Duty. And you saw the boats and the mine that floats. and. Every the piece Crocs of equipment mine. yeah, has been love it. filtered, like, how does it work through water? Like, we had to look at everything in the game and say, how does it work in water? Our What's vehicles, the best version? Our vehicles will just slowly submerge <laughs> yeah. really would, instead of blinking out. Yeah, everything. Yeah, everything. A lot of details. The oh behaviors are awesome. Oh, my God. Well, I cannot quite to, uh, can't quite wait to literally haha, dip my toes into those waters. <laughs> uh, but, guys, let's not forget about the ground and the air. Like, I mean, what else is going to be coming to the movement system? Joe, what have we got? Well, you know, last game we did mount um, and we had slide and, and even though we're a military shooter, fluid movement is super important to us. So this game, you saw in the trailer, you can see here on the video, we have a new ledge hang mechanic and that's essentially a high mantle. But instead of doing a high mantle and throwing yourself up over into combat, you can now peek. If you have a pistol, you can pull that pistol out and use that. Um, we also added a dive. You know, last game we had the slide that kept your gun up, but we really wanted players to have an option where if they're getting shot at, they don't know where they're getting shot at, they can get down, get out of fire. But the other really cool thing is the dive is just high enough to let you get through a window. And so if you throw a grenade up into a building second story, often you'll see players, you know, like rats leaving a ship, diving out through the windows. <laughs> and uh, it's just another, it's another option for players in, in combat. Yeah, and all of these dynamic movements mean you can interact with vehicles specifically in a very cool way. I'm yeah. going to save uh, some of that some of that gas for when we get to Warzone 2.0, but uh, it's a really exciting. All right, vehicle details to come. Uh, but now, guys, let's talk about equipment. Obviously, Call of Duty, crazy sandbox, a lot of cool toys to play with. Uh, Joe, what are some of the new dynamite new items that we're going to be throwing at each other and equipping and using in all sorts in the next game? I mean, you saw some cool stuff in the trailer. You saw the drill charge. You saw the shock stick. Um, one of the other cool ones you saw is the inflatable decoy. And this is a mine that you can throw out, and it basically sits there. And if a player gets close to it, it auto deploys and uh, basically inflates like a, like a car airbag going off. <laughs> And it faces the person that triggered it. And so it's a great distraction technique. You can also fire it off with a, with a clacker if you want to control when it goes off. You can throw it in water. And here you just saw the, the DDoS. We added all this equipment into this game. And the DDoS is our, our kind of answer of like, hey, I'm going to breach this building. I want to go clean house, but I don't want to deal with all the shit inside. So I'm going to hit the DDoS. Boom, it's going to shut down Perfect everything. And I can move in yeah, and clear that room. Um, you saw the heartbeat sensor is back. It's got a new look. Uh, but it also has a battery as a balancing mechanic, so you can't use it indefinitely in Warzone. Um, and there's, I mean, there's this so much This is the TAC more. cam, too, which yeah. you guys yeah. just saw, which to me is um, my personal favorite. You can put out a lot of them, and yeah. even you can patch into your teammates. So you can, it gets a little crazy. Yeah, kind of like a fun. sticky GoPro, but will actually mark your enemies for um, your team. Yeah. So it's, it's 
I, I expect to see a lot of fun There's moments so many, with that today. There's so many <laughs> toys and new tools that we're like, we just want players to get in and play with. I think there's something like 13 filled upgrades, you know, between Warzone and Core MP, and it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. Oh my God. Until they all get DDoS. Ha <laughs> <Yeah>. ha <laughs> uh, All this talk about equipment, uh, it reminds me, I mean, that's one element to look at now, but we've also got Gunsmith, brand new Gunsmith. Uh, guys, what can you tell me about it and, and how will it change the way that we, you know, level our weapons and manage them? I mean, what's going on there? Yeah, so the new Gunsmith allows players to build out their weapons more smoothly than ever before. We, we put out some videos yesterday for the Intel drop. I hope people dig into those if you want a better look at Gunsmith 2.0. But we're really looking at unprecedented opportunities for weapon customization. And the new weapon platforming will actually allow players to unlock universal attachments through cross progression. So we saw a lot of really positive feedback from the community yesterday. This is sort of intended to, you know, decrease the grind. You're no longer unlocking every single attachment for every single weapon. There will be some shared attachments through progression. And um, I'm really excited to see the streamers and the content creators jump into this today. Um, I know I know we all love the gun bench from 2019, so it's exciting. Yeah, it does sound amazing. Uh, so we've been hearing uh, a little bit about weapon platforms and shared attachments. This is very, very cool stuff. Can you dive into those details, though, Jeremy? What can we expect? Yeah, I can add a little bit of what, to what Stephanie said. Um, we had this vision last game with Gunsmith, and we, we were like, okay, what if you could take an assault rifle and you could make it an SMG? And that was our driving kind of like motivator for that system. And we kind of hit that. We, you, could, you could take it functionally through attachments, but the weapon name wouldn't change, and we couldn't change the receiver. And really, that's the key thing this game, is you can go into Gunsmith, you can set up an AK-47 assault rifle with a thermal optic, with a suppressor, with a grip, and then you can say, you know what, I want to change up the play style of this gun. You can swap out the receiver to the AK-74U, make it an SMG, but you can keep that optic, that suppressor, that grip, they all come with. And to what Stephanie said, we have shared attachments within these platforms. We have branching progression. You unlock those guns by playing with other guns. And then we have shared attachments across all guns. And it's all to hit this vision of I'm building up an arsenal of weapons and an arsenal of attachments. I'm sitting down to my gun bench, and I'm going to make the perfect weapon for me. I think the maybe the simplest way to think about it is this, is a gun tree, and each time uh, you hit a branch, uh, that's a receiver, and they and they grow out of that. Yeah. Yeah, and that's you know we wanted to ground that in reality. The re functionally a receiver, you know, is is based in that changing the weapon type, and I think it provides a really seamless experience for players looking to build out the perfect weapon for a multitude of play styles. So you're going to be able to jump into that platform and customize however you want for, you know, situational combat. And um, you're actually going to see the FJX Cinder Weapon Vault in action today, which is the entirely unlocked Platform 1, the M4, the Mic 4. And the Weapon Vault maintains its aesthetic properties across all corresponding attachments. So we've heard you talk about the Franken print. This is our answer. It's an extremely rare. Um, this is a huge you know, project for, for our teams to design these, but um, it is the ultimate weapon blueprint. And even better, you can unlock the entire Cinder Weapon Vault with the Vault Edition of Modern Warfare 2. Okay. Available in beta. Available in beta, so we can rock with that thing all weekend long. Okay, so Gunsmith looks incredible. Uh, okay, I'm excited. I cannot wait to get into this one soon. Our streamers are going to get into this one soon as well. Uh, but first, guys, we need to hear about maps and modes. We've got our tools to play with, equipment, weapons, maps and modes, though. Let's get into this one. Uh, let's get into uh, the design team, you know, the philosophy, uh, I suppose, behind building out maps. Ask me, Jeff, this is for you. Um, yeah, you know, right from the start, we knew we wanted to build a big, another big map, um, not only for Battle Royale, but also for this other mode that we've been working on for uh, quite a long time. <laughs> um, I read about that on the internet. Ah, yeah. yes. <laughs> but, you know, when, when you lay out these big maps, you, it's kind of a collection of all these little POIs, these points of interest. And um, within each of these, we've really fine-tuned that they can play core, large-scale core modes, like Ground War, um, and a bunch of others um, really well. And so, you know, stepping back from this large map and looking at how much open world sandboxy gameplay that we have, we looked back at our 6v6 maps and really tried to refine and uh, make them a tighter experience to contrast all this big world um, kind of exploratory gameplay. So the maps uh, for 6v6, um, in comparison to the last game, they're just um, a little bit more straightforward, a little bit more refined, and um, I think fans will really enjoy how um, quick they play. That sounds... A lot of diversity in those maps yeah. as well. A lot of visual variety, some colorful maps in there, and um, they, I think they, they feel really clean. 
guys, you're moving me in ways I didn't imagine to be moved today. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Drive? I might. <laughs> hey, hey, it's the first time for okay. it here on, on air. Uh, we've got some of the maps that we are going to be seeing in MW2. Uh, starting with one, uh, we've got a real fun one here, guys. This is one of the aforementioned battle maps. Uh, team, can you give me some details on Sarif Bay? So Sarif Bay is this little fishing town um, in the south coast of our big map. And it, we picked this because it has such a great mix of gameplay. Uh, it's right on a harbor, so we get to show off all our boats and our new amphibious um, APC. Um, and, you know, swimming, as we've already said. Um, but what you get inside the town is this really intense urban combat with all these tight little alleyways and uh, all this great rooftop combat. And mixed with our ledge hang, you get these really cool parkour combat um, uh, action happening. Yeah, I love how you describe the, uh, the rooftops there on this map specifically as like a separate ecosystem. You can kind of migrate that entire vertical. You can go up there yeah. and just hang out and fight other snipers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that looks fantastic, Jeff. Okay, so that's one of our larger maps. Uh, what about some of the 6v6 maps? I think we have uh, we have some footage of one of the new maps that we're going to be seeing today uh, named Mercado Las Almas. Uh, do you mind giving us some details on this one? Sure. Mercado is, um, is a uh, little street market in a historic section in Mexico. Um, our story behind this is, uh, you know, the authorities have some intel that uh, narcotics are being smuggled out of a warehouse, and they're going in trying to um, find and seize them. Um, this map plays really fast and a lot of action right down that center lane. Um, the Mercado is a very dangerous uh, neck of the woods, so <laughs> watch out when you're uh, playing in the beta. It plays fast. <laughs> cannot wait, really cannot wait. Looks fantastic. And again, uh, interesting to see uh, you know, how that ties into campaigns and whatnot. All sorts of fun and games wink, ahead wink. of us. Looks amazing. Battle maps, core maps, 6v6. All this looks fantastic. Uh, but let's go back to modes. So we've seen some maps. Uh, what about the modes being played on battle maps? Uh, we will have the return of Ground War, uh, but we've got a new large scale mode that you've uh, alluded to, right? Let's talk invasion. So Invasion is it's a it's a big war map. It's like it's a big war TDM, or we affectionately call it the, the shipment of ground war. Um, it's 20 v 20 players, but there's also 20 AI on each team. Uh, AI are coming in fast roping. They're coming in on medium birds, um, and it's this high action mode. It's super fun, but it's also really chill. The announcer's not barking at you. He's not saying like, "Hey, get to B." You know, they're taking C. <laughs> you can kind of play it how you want to play it. You sit up on a rooftop and snipe. You can grab a shotgun and go room clearing. If you push too far into the enemy's base, AI will come hunt you. Uh, but we've also been really um, conscious of where we put AI in multiplayer. Um, we didn't put AI in kill streaks or anything like that because we don't want AI showing up in search and destroy. We don't want AI in domination. This mode, though, however, was built for AI, and it's a super fun mode. Can't wait for people to try it. Kind of a funny aside, you know, we took the name Ground War from a playlist in MW2, and that was just large scale TDM and DOM. And we kind of did the DOM in the last game, um, and now we're able to add kind of the sandbox TDM, and so we're kind of completing the cycle of that um, that old playlist. Yeah. yeah. Well, this large scale stuff looks amazing. This looks so, so awesome. And uh, okay, so what about the new 6v6 modes? Just keep dialing it in closer and closer. Steph, what have we got? Yeah, so we also have two new 6v6 modes that you're going to be seeing here played today, um, and they will be in beta in Prisoner Rescue and Knockout. Prisoner Rescue. Okay, let's go into Prisoner Rescue first, Joe. So Prisoner Rescue is an attack and defend mode. It's a round-based mode. The defenders have two prisoners. They're kind of spread out, and they need to, to keep hold of them. The goal of the attackers is to get to those prisoners, pick them up, and carry them to exfil. Um, when you pick them up, you enter what's called a wounded carry, where they're up on your shoulders and you can't use your primary weapons. Instead, you have to use a pistol if you brought it or you're just stuck with fists. But the way that we give the attackers an advantage once they grab that prisoner is they get a radar sweep for their team so they can call out where the defenders are. Um, and the objective icon over the prisoner goes away as soon as they scoop them up. So now the defenders have to basically rotate back to the exfil and set up defensive positions. And it's this heart-pounding, adrenaline-pushing like mode once you grab that prisoner and try and get them out. Um, yeah, that, a, that hero run to yeah. the exfil <laughs> is... Um, Definitely, yeah. uh, you know, S and big S&D energy in this mode, um, which I resonates with me in my time in eSports. So this is my personal favorite of the new ones, and um, also sort of the strategic revives that happen. And there is mm -hmm. a revive mechanic, and so you are able to to pick up your teammates. And um, I've seen some pretty pretty wild comebacks in our playtest so far. 
It was a lot of fun. Uh, we got to play a ton of it yesterday. It was amazing. Incredibly fun. And I know the community is going to love diving into it over the next week. Okay, I can hardly believe that there's actually a lot more content to get through. But there's one more thing I have to bring up. I have the honor of officially announcing that Third Person View is finally coming to Modern Warfare 2. Uh, what are the details behind this one? We got a little teaser of it uh, on, on stage from Patro, but what are the details? Yeah, you saw a little hint of it in the trailer, too. Um, it's It's been a pet project for us, right? We've always wanted to do third person. And all while we're working on all this other stuff, we've been kind of lifting up and doing third person in each mode. And the cool thing is that it's a modifier on our game, right? We can just turn on third person. In the beta, we'll be playing it in hardpoint, but we want to try it post-launch in S&D. We want to try it in VR. Um, and we have... You know, camera work, the camera collision's been reworked, uh, it handles tight spaces, there's a water camera, there's an interior camera. You can feel the weapon shake when you're firing with it, and it's just, we've put a lot of work into it, and we're excited for people to give it a try. Incredible. I can't wait to see what third-person COD feels like in 2022. Sexy skins and everything. This is a lot of information, Steph. Like, we've, there's a ton here. I tried to warn you. They're <laughs> delivering a lot of new features for you guys to try out ahead of release. Um, and I said we were going to be bold with this beta, and we are, but there's even more to come at launch. So this is just a taste. How is this just a taste? How can there be even more? <laughs> I mean, we haven't even got to Warzone yet. <laughs> well, <not> even, okay. <laughs> okay, so what about uh, this year's third mode? So I'm happy to say that Special Ops will return as our third mode and will be focused on two-player missions, asymmetrical in game design. So think one player on air support, one player on the ground. And um, I think the OG fans will be really excited because we've looked at, you know, some of the iconic Modern Warfare missions like Overwatch and, and really tried to um, implement some of those themes into the design. So uh, we'll be talking more about special ops in the uh, in the months to come. Steph, you're saying I should be looking uh, now for a special ops partner. Sitting right next to you. Yes, you are indeed. Well, I'm all set then, Stephanie. I do believe we have one more uh, surprise for PlayStation players out there. What's that? Indeed we do. Let's uh, roll the clip. <laughs> Empty-handed, I was born. Empty-handed, I will ascend. Blade or bullet, fist or bow. Spear, stone or arrow, these are merely tools. I am the one to fear. Miles ISO. Fix your mic. PlayStation players will receive an exclusive operator, Oni. Oni is a warrior and gun for hire, descended from centuries old samurai clan and torn between country and family, just like me. Uh, this is such an awesome looking operator, guys. Oni is going to be playable on day one for all who pre ordered through the PlayStation Store. Plus, he comes with a high level weapon bl blueprint playable in multiplayer and Warzone 2.0. Steph, badass. Oni is awesome. I myself am a PlayStation player, and so I will be locking becoming Oni main day one for this game. Um, <laughs> And it's been really awesome to see our narrative team building out his lore, really bringing this operator to life with the creation of his backstory, his motives. And I think um, the art team absolutely crushed it with this skin. He is so... So cool looking. <laughs> all right, Stephanie, we keep talking about all the uh, the things that you know we have to look forward to, but um, we are missing quite a big one here. We're missing the start of the beta. So for anyone who wants to get an early first-hand look at Modern Warfare 2, and trust me, you definitely want to, it is immediately available around the corner. For PlayStation players who pre-order any version, early access to the open beta starts tomorrow. So make sure you are preloading right now. Now, also check out your screens, since here's exactly when you can play the beta on your platform of choice. But don't forget, friends, it's also definitely worth noting that if you pre-order the Vault Edition of Modern Warfare 2, you get to use the red Team 141 Operator Pack and the FJX Cinder Weapon Vault in the beta, in addition to being able to earn in-game rewards for playing all sorts of cool swag 